Hello everyone, it's Bubonic Zombie. Welcome back to Along the Edge. So, in the last episode, uh, we were, um, finally properly introduced to Stanislaus Maltair, um, and his nephew, uh, Pierre. So, we got invited to this cocktail party, and let's see how it goes. Um, I have a feeling the second-hand, uh, embarrassment is about to happen. Because I personally am not good in social situations. Okay. The gardens of the city hall are magnificent, with their trees dawn and the flaming colors of fall. There's already a lot of people hanging around in small groups, drinking glasses of wine leisurely. The guests are all dressed up to the rock to the nines, and the luxury of the event looks more like a big wedding in a town gathering in a small countryside village. The Maltairs clearly didn't balk at the expenses. I have barely enough time to ask for a cup of champagne at the buffet before I am approached by a large man in a black suit. He is closely followed by a tall and haughty blonde woman. I can reasonably deduce she's his wife. Oh, ease, Maltair. Ah! Good evening, miss. You must be the new owner of the castle. I'm glad you came to our little party. I must confess, I was eager to learn a bit more about the new owner of the castle. Let me introduce you to my wife, Clothilde Maltair. Good evening, miss. Daphne, please to meet you. Her icy handshake contrasts sharply with the friendliness of her husband. I can read a mix of contempt and distaste in her eyes. Weird. <laughs> Looks like my daughter, Sol Solane, has been ambushed by our elder, Mr. Murray. He points towards a pretty young blonde woman on the other side of the path. She's leaned towards an old man in a wheelchair. Who has caught her by her wrist and seems determined to not let her go for as long as decency will allow. About my son. I heard you already met him. Yes, I did. Since we're done with introductions, allow me to get straight to the point. I must admit my invitation wasn't totally innocent. As you're about to see for yourself later, during the opening ceremony, we're very concerned about the preservation of our cultural heritage here in the village. As you may have heard, our relations with your grandmother were... How could I put it? Tense. I'm, I'm gonna allow him. This is our first meeting. I don't wanna, I don't wanna be rude. And that's what I heard around, indeed. By the way, if... If the voices are blurring together, it's because there are just so many characters. So if it sounds like like the same older women have the same voice, I apologize. I'm not talented in voice acting, um, but I'm. I definitely. My main thing is to try at least keep Daphne's voice the same. I guess the maintenance costs for the castle are nothing to sneeze at. If you agreed upon it to visitors, at least a couple of days during the year, the city hall might generously help you pay some of the expenses. Um, I'm personally, I'm not fond of visitors. No. Listen, I'm not at ease with opening my home to strangers. I understand your objection, but I assure you your private life will be preserved. The most interesting part of the building is the tower. We can imagine only opening this part to the public, but... Something tells me it's going to be a hard sell. But I hope whatever happened in the past between the Maltairs and the Delatois won't be an obstacle to our possible collaboration. Anyway... Let me assure you that I come with the best intentions, and I hope with all my heart that your moving here will be under a sign of new understanding between our families. Mm. 
Hmm. I think I'll be able to find out about the tower on my own since it's on my property. But I want to find out what happened. Can you tell me what happened exactly between the Maltairs and the Delatoires? We're in a can of worms here at the village, and the smallest trifle can take enormous proportions. My grandfather had a grudge against the Delatois since I was born. I'm not even I'm sure even he could have told the origins of this old quarrel. I'm not gonna accuse him of lying right off the bat. I mean I, I personally I don't believe him. I think he knows way more than he's telling us. Um, but I'm not going to accuse him of lying. You're right. It doesn't matter anymore. We better forge ahead. Exactly my opinion. Listen, I would be delighted to talk longer, but unfortunately, duty calls. Have a nice evening. You too. You small tear disappears into the crowd. Now that I know who the other members of the family are, I'll be able to question them directly. Celine is still struggling with the old man and Clothfield, her mother, seems to have taken advantage of her husband's departure to get to the buffet. And after all, nothing forces me to engage in social niceties. I can also decide I've seen enough and go home. What should I do? Talk to Celine, talk to Cl I'm not gonna talk to the que to the creepy wife. I'm not gonna do it. Unless we're able to go back to it before we go home. But I'm not going that's not my first option. I'm gonna talk to the daughter because she seemed like she's in trouble. <laughs> oh that's I like that I like that print on her dress. Seeing the approach, Celine sizes her chance and finally manages to extra extricate herself from the claws of Mrs. Mr. Murray. I can see her for an instant, a mix of gratitude and relief in her eyes. Then she comes towards me with a large smile. You must be Daphne Delatois. I'm Celine Maltaire, Stanley's oldest sister. Pleased to meet you. Oh, the pleasure is mine. I was looking forward to meeting you. Stan told me you were charming. Let's see. Let's see. I'm gonna... I'm gonna go with this one. See him with your son. Yes, indeed. He was picking up your son at the end of the day. Ah, then you met my kid. I hope he behaved himself around you. I know he's a handful since his dad passed away. Well, it's not easy every day. I'm, I'm not going to intrude. Sorry to hear that. I'm sorry to hear that. Thank you. It's nice of you to say this. It's been hard, but I'm getting better, one day at a time. Stan was fantastic. He held me afloat during the hard times after the accident. He took good care of his little nephew. And I must confess, he told me a lot about you. Really? He told me about, told you about me? Oh, I'm blushing! <laughs> he did, and I apologize in advance for his behavior. I know how he can be around women. He might resent me telling you this, but I think he's got quite a crush on you. I'm, I don't have any feelings towards, towards him at all. Barking up the wrong tree. I'm afraid he's barking up the wrong tree. I'm sorry, but I'm not really available. Oh, that's that's me talking. It was by her posture I thought she was talking. I'm sorry, but I'm not really available at the moment. Ah? Uh -huh. Okay then, I get it. Oh, and sorry to put you on the spot. It's a big sister thing. I can't refrain myself. You know, he never got lucky in love. I don't know why. But I felt like it could have worked out with you. She burst out laughing. Well, enough talking about my brother. Tell me more about yourself. 
What are you doing for a living? Do you like it here? In the village? We talk for a good 20 minutes. So Lean seems nice and outgoing. But I have a hard time deciding if it's not just a facade. And I seem to lose her attention several times. Until, without notice, she leaves me hanging there to engulf herself inside the city hall. It does seem like she was a bit... By her posture... It does seem like she was a bit put off that I turned down her brother. But again, just me personally, I am more attached to Frank. You know, and I mean, I personally wouldn't want to be involved with a rich kid. No offense to, to those people out there who are in the 1%. <laughs> um, but I'm just saying, like, I just get the feeling that there's something off about this family. And their money and their position are putting them like on like a pedestal. And I don't want to be involved with people that see themselves as higher than, than other people, you know. And Frank seems to be like a salt of the earth kind of like um honest guy. Okay. So, since we have the option, I am going to talk to her mother. Who is definitely creepy. I mean, look at that! She's just, like, permanently glaring at us! Cloth Hill and Motel is chatting with a group of people smartly dressed, a vague smile on her lips. Her face is very hard to read. Is she attending this function reluctantly? Or is her distant and haughty attitude really revealing of her personality? Seeing me approaching, she apologizes to her guests and takes me aside. And Mrs. Maltaire. Listen, girl. I'm, ta I'm talking with Dr. Dar Zarkarian and his wife. If you haven't been raised well enough to understand common decency, I hope you'll excuse my being straightforward. But I'm afraid I have neither the time nor the urge to help you correct your lackings. So, if you don't mind, I'll go back to my guests and you. I don't know. Enjoy the buffet, maybe? Wish you an excellent evening. You know, I'm gonna let this go. I'm not gonna put myself in a position where this is like, this is her ground. This is her territory. If I get worked up, she'll make a scene and she'll make me look like the bad person. Just let it go. Just let it go. She she wants to be salty. Just let her, let her be in the salt. I stay dumbstruck as Cloth Hill turns away goes back to her conversation. I didn't imagine she would be so hostile towards me. I realize there's a kind of sway in the crowd. The guests are gathering around a tribune. I guess the unveiling ceremony is about to begin. Someone is walking against the current, splitting the crowd in my direction. The Daphne? It's Stanislaus. He's carrying a glass of wine. He seems a bit drunk. He came. Nice. <laughs> I was like, are you okay? <laughs> are you alright? Something tells me you had too much to drink, haven't you? Too much? Nah. That's the minimal medication to suffer through my old man's speech. Follow me. Your sister must be around here somewhere. I turn my back to him, looking for Celine, who should know what to do with her brother in this kind of situation. I barely have time to turn my eyes as Stan twists me around, holding me against him. I look into his eyes and understand perfectly well what is about to happen. I'm trying to hold him back, but his lips end up on mine. Luckily, I'm saved by a rasping voice that stops Stanless in his tracks. Isn't corrupting our youth enough for you? Beatrice Levesque is standing next to us and looks at me with a look of anger and reprobation. Again, I'm not going to cause a scene. Calm down, Mrs. Levesque. I was just about to leave. And you could just... Oh... Beatrice doesn't wait for me to finish my sentence before throwing the content of her glass of red wine at my face. That's for you, dirty! 
Surprised by the aggression, I step backward and fall over. I feel a sharp pain in my left hand. My cheeks get flush. I have a ball of heat radiating inside my chest. Dirty what? Dirty witch? Is that what you wanted to say? Sanilus helps me get up. I feel something warm and moist dripping along my finger. I realize I must have cut my hand in the fall. See? I'm injured! Are you happy? Since you're so sure that I'm a dirty witch, then I curse you. You're going to pay for what you did to me tonight. Is that what you were waiting for? Are you satisfied? If I'm a spellcaster, as you say, why not put my powers to good use? Daphne, your hand. Blood has been drawn. Careful of what you're about to do. I have the perverse satisfaction to see Miss Levesque turning white as a sheet. I hold her gaze until she gives up and turns on her heels. Stan puts his hand on my shoulder and shakes me gently. Daphne? Daphne, do you realize what? I cut him off and lash out. Ah, that's enough now. Leave me alone. I stride into the bathroom to wash my wound, mop the, the wine from my face, and most of all, try to calm down. In the distance, on the tribune, Ismail Terra has taken the microphone and is about to speak. My dear friends, neighbors, and fellow citizens, we gather together to celebrate the start of the fall season. As you all know by tradition, this time of the year is dedicated to reflection and remembrance. It's a time when we think about our lost relatives who are waiting for us on the other side. But it's also the time to, of the offering when we pray to the invisible entities for a mild winter. That's why our craftsmen have worked hard during the summer for this celebration, so that we will be ready in time to show you the fruit of our efforts. As we're leaving summer behind to enter winter, this time of offering, as I said, seems like appropriate time to renew our pact with our protectors. Those invisible forces who allowed our traditions to survive century after century, not to disappear because of invasions or external influences, and who bring us luck, happiness, prosperity every year. So, I'm proud to present you a physical representation of our pact, this statue, symbol of our community, that has been deteriorated by the years and the weather, and has now been made anew by the masterful hand of our local craftsmen. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present you... The Sphinx! Chapter 4 November Okay, this is our boss. She's been transferred to intensive care yesterday night. And she died earlier today. The doctors have done all they could, but they said her chance of survival were next to none. How did I get there? Though we're already well into November, I feel like this cocktail happened yesterday. When Eve's Maltera unveiled the statue of the Sphinx that looked exactly like the one I saw in my dream, I felt as if I was struck by lightning. I have before me the confirmation of this tenacious intuition that has been following me since I've arrived here at the village. This feeling that there was something, somewhere, that would give me meaning to all this, something I was brushing against with all with my hand, but was gliding around my fingers like a trickle of water. I decided to look at all this like a strength I could tap into rather than a bottomless ex existential abyss, and diffuse belief in something else, something better, that would animate me, help me go through everyday life, trials. Frank went back to the city three days ago, a job there he needs to overlook. 
told me he wouldn't be back before at least the end of the month. I was surprised he came to tell me he was leaving. It made me realize it's been a while since I saw him last. I don't know what to think about this long trip, though. Is he already thinking of leaving the village for good? And then, Stan tried to call me. Well, by calling me, I mean that my voicemail has been saturated by his messages. I was so angry at him. I must admit I deleted them without even listening. Miss Delator? Are you okay? You look upset. What happened exactly? How did she get in this accident? Here's what her sister told me. Beatrice Levesque has taken Cliff, taken the cliff road to pick up her son, Jean-Baptiste, after a soccer game. The car seems to have skidded on a path of ice. see why he's telling us. I mean, it's it's uh, the mother of one of our students. It's horrible. And to think about her son. Yes. And you're the head teacher of his class. I count on your vigilance. Jean-Baptiste is going to need our support doing through this. Besides, I'm sorry to talk about it in these circumstances. But I want to see you anyway. I know you're only a substitute. We are very happy of your work so far. As you might have heard, Mr. Galvin is going to retire next year. If you're interested, his post may be for you. Well, I might have to pull uh, out all the stops at the academy to convince them we have to keep you during the transition period. That's why I need to make sure you want a permanent job here, in the school. I would love that! No more sub! Actual teacher! I would be delighted. Yes! Exactly what I want to hear. Miss Delatoire, I can't promise you Mr. Galvin's pulse for sure, but I'll do my best to keep you with us. As for you, don't change a thing. We'll talk again soon. I don't know how to thank you, Mr. Chesonet. All the pleasure is mine. Alright, we're going through the main topics. Would you allow me to ask you something a bit... personal? Okay. Shoot. Of course, I'm listening. Stop me if I'm wrong, but... How can I put it? People talk. I heard you had words with Miss Levesque at the cocktail party. Do you, by any chance... Hmm. I don't know how to say it. Oh, no need to beat around the bush. Chew by any chance, and let me insist on by any chance. Have any part of responsibility in Miss Levesque's ask accident? I'm not going to change the subject because that looks suspicious. So, no. Absolutely not. Mr. Chasinez, I can understand that the people of the village may entertain some romantic notions about my family, but you of all people? I didn't know you were sharing these kinds of beliefs. If you were to point out the influence of these superstitions on my efficiency as a teacher, let me put your mind at ease. I'm a woman of science. I don't give any credit to these beliefs. I assure you that my teaching is in no way impacted. There was no question. In this case, I don't see why we're talking about it. Is there anything else, Monsieur Chesonet? Well, no. There isn't. Let me wish you a very good day, sir. Miss. I think that went over well. It probably didn't. I'm probably digging myself into a hole I can't get out of, but let's just keep going. As if today wasn't emotionally charged enough. When I get to the castle, I discover a sports car parked in front of the house. Of course, I've already guessed the identity of its owner. Walking into the hall, I find Stanis inside, sipping leisurely from a glass of whiskey while nonchalantly looking at the family portraits. That is rude. I would have offered you a drink, 
but it looks like you've already taken the matter into your own hands. It was open, so I left myself in. I don't regret it since I've been waiting for you for a while. Already at my second refill. Besides, I thought school teachers end their day much earlier, don't they? I've been delayed. Daphne, we need to talk. Mm. You know what? I'm, I'm gonna give him a chance. Looking at the state of my voicemail, I had a clue you would come over sooner than later. I'm listening. After all that happened, I have to warn I had to warn you. You really need to know about our family, the village, and everything else. I sit on the sofa, disregarding the armchair on the other side of the coffee table. Sanalus takes place right beside me. Oh, that's creepy. If I could still explain his behavior at the cocktail party by the fact he was drunk, I can't ignore the strong signals he's sending my way anymore. Stan takes a big breath, then starts. Of course, there's my father, his projects, his old quarrel with the Delatoires, and his sick obsession with the tower. When I learned about the Beatrice Levesque, that's when I realized the urgency of the situation. I saw you do what you did at the cocktail party. I remember everything I've been hearing since I was a child. All these unbelievable stories of witchcraft. I never had a real proof of any of this was true. When I heard she was dead. Well, it's been haunting me all day. I had to tell you. Forgive my bluntness, but I have to ask. Did you know what you were doing back then? Considering I just said I'm a person of science, that and I don't want to get involved. Yeah. Don't believe in magic. I'm going to go with don't believe in magic. Don't tell me you're also giving credit to these witches' stories. Don't you find that unsettling? Beatrice Levesque died in a car accident. Patches of ice have nothing to do with magic. Daphne, it's been what? Three months since you arrived? I don't see how it changes the fundamental laws of physics. I was born here. I've been hearing these stories for 30 years. It's neither the first inexplicable accident I've witnessed, nor the first strange coincidence I've seen. Very well. Let's say, for argument's sake, that I've cursed Mrs. Levesque. I apologize if you guys are hearing noise in the background. Currently there's a thunderstorm right now. And where I record is next to a window. So I apologize if you're hearing things in the background. If you're hearing actual thunder or rain in the background. That's not in the game. That's in real life. I'm sorry guys. You realize it means I've killed her. That's not what I was saying. You didn't know what you were doing. Maybe. But try to understand that this witchcraft stuff goes against everything I believe. And that makes me, if any of this is true, responsible for the death of the mother of one of my students. I'm overwhelmed by emotions. I realize I've been holding my tears back since the director broke out the news. I burst into tears and Stan takes me in his arms. I let him. I can't believe we got so close this fast, Stanilus and I. I need a couple of minutes to calm down. When he's sure most of the storm is behind us, Stan gently lets go of his hug, looking at me straight in the eyes while holding me by the shoulders, says, Please forgive me. I've been terribly inconsiderate. Of course, you couldn't have known what would happen. I keep forgetting you're not from here. And besides... No one told you what was happening in the village. So, I'm begging you, please don't feel guilty. It's us, the Malteris and the others who should feel guilty for not having warned you. Something else to tell me? I'm afraid I do. I believe my father made you an offer at the cocktail party, didn't he? Well, yes, a 
about the tower, right? He wants to gain access to it, if I understood correctly. Exactly. If he hasn't come yet, it's that he's building a file out at the city hall. Selene is in on this. He's making her work day in and day out. I'm sorry for her. He wants to frame everything before telling you of his plans. What can he really do to me? The house is legally mine. He can't throw me out like that, for no reason. Maybe, but I assure you, he's not joking around. Whatever happens, he mustn't accept the deal. Why are you so eager for me to refuse? I want to refuse as well, just throwing that out there for you guys. I know, Eves. Whether I want it or not, he's been dealing with him daily since I was born. He's a shark, and considering how much he resents the Delatoise, I can assure you that he's going to do something that serves his interests, but mostly harms yours. Um... I'm, again, I'm pretty sure I'll find out what's inside on my own, but I want to know why. Why me? What did my family do to generate so much hate? It goes back very far. Our great-grandparents, or even further, I don't know for sure. What's been told is that the Delatoires used to be very influential family in the area. Your family has kept to their traditions despite the law and the name Delatois of the tower. Goes from mother to daughter, with the eldest daughter being the spiritual guide of the community. A kind of Celtic great priestess, if you see what I mean. Since, well, Christianity never really got big around here, as you must have noticed. Story tells that your ancestor, the great priestess, had to speak with my ancestor, and my family had no choice but to curse yours to save their honor. Since then, the Maltairs began to accumulate their wealth and prosper, while the Delatoires went downhill. Let's assume what you're saying is true. It all happened a long time ago. Why keep this old quarrel alive? I didn't do anything to harm your family, and besides, it looks like the Maltairs have already won the game, haven't they? They still don't have the tower. My understanding is that these blessings have a price. And all my father wants to do is lift the curse that also weighs on my family. And the tower will be the key to all this. But I can't let Eves go inside because he could do harm to me? Exactly. It may sound stupid, but I have to ask. Do you know where the tower entrance is? I don't. But everyone in the village knows that it has been condemned after the events that tore both our families apart. Why would no one tell me then? Don't dress the vi villagers too harshly. They're naturally superstitious, especially when it comes to us. Should I prepare myself for other revelations, or are you done? I guess I told you most of it. Broad outline. But you must have a thousand questions. Hmm... I'm going to ask about his father's plans. Tell me more about your father's plans. As I was saying, he wants to get inside the tower, and he will stop at nothing. As I know him, he's going to try to win you over at first. He's currently building a file with the city hall to open the tower to the public. On the other hand, they would pay for all the maintenance costs. It could be worth it, too. At least, hear what he offers, don't you think? The cost to keep the castle afloat are nothing to sneeze at, and the money I got with the legacy is in inexhaustible. I don't have any other way to say it, and I don't have any proof except my experience and the trust you may put in my word. But I assure you, accepting anything coming from my father is a very bad idea, and I agree with that. During the time of your grandmother, he was resigned not to get into the tower. But now things have changed, and he wants to take advantage of the opportunity. I'm sure he's about to come over with a very attractive financial setup. He's counting on your supposed naivety to get what he's after. Alright, let's say I refuse. What happens next? Depends. Depends on what? 
depends on whether or not you believe in all this witchcraft stuff. It also goes back to that, right? Maybe, but it's a very lively notion for the people who live here. And then, whatever your position on the question is, Eve's threats are very real. We won't be the first to oppose him. But you have a lot of cards in your deck to manage to be the last. Okay. I wish we could just skip all this. I wish there was an option to, like, end the conversation, go home. Your family. I must admit I'm curious. Can you tell me more about them? I think you've already grasped the ins and the outs. On one hand, there's my parents, Eve's and Clothild. We've been on bad terms since I'm old enough to understand the way they think. What do you mean? Hmm, how can I sum up the Maltera way? I would say manipulation and extortion under the cover of good. Ah, I accidentally pressed it. Charming. But I'm asking myself, why do they stay in the village? I mean, with so much wealth, they could live anywhere, couldn't they? You mean, less far from civilization? You're not wrong, but don't forget that they're very attached to the area, with their beliefs. They're too afraid they might lose their blessings if they leave, I guess. And yet, I'm only speculating. You decided I wasn't fit to be a top rank heir long after I was old enough to be in the know. What about you? Have you ever thought about leaving? Of course, I did. But with Soleen and her son stuck here, I couldn't resolve myself to leave them alone in the mouth of madness. Sure, makes sense. Besides, I strongly suspect my father might have more or less responsible the death of Soleen's husband. A nice accidental death, like he enjoys them, be it supernatural or not. After all, since his own son wouldn't do, he needed an heir to pass on his great values, right? But, it's awful. Welcome to my world. Of course, I'm doing my best to protect Pierre from all this. I'm afraid I've already lost the war. He idealized his grandfather, of course. And with reasons, he'd be a very nice guy when he wants to. As for Celine, she's always been kept out of this. She was the perfect daughter, and my parents, with their traditional values, didn't have a lot of ambition for her. I think all they wanted from their daughter was a nice wedding that would, preferably, help the family affairs. Stan stops talking, staring at nothing. I don't know what else to say. Finally, he's the one to break the silence before it comes too awkward. Well, that's it. You know everything. I'm not going to ask about him. I have nothing else to ask you. There's one more thing I want to ask you. His eyes say a lot about the kind of subject we're about to discuss. One on one hand, Frank is... I think that's supposed to be on the one hand. On the one hand, Frank is still in the picture. On the other hand... What am I risking by checking if the grass is greener on the other side? No, nope. you're you're gone. Go, go, leave. I know what you're about to say. I thought it was clear. I'm sorry, but spare me that it's not you. It's me, speech. I get it. You change your mind. You know where to find me. Okay. So, we're going to end on that note. Hopefully, he gets the message. Go away. Um, and yeah, I'm going to do all I can to turn down his dad. Um, I personally, just throwing that out there, I'm not against getting into magic and becoming a sorceress and all that. You know, if that means that this, this family will leave me alone... You know, and they'll stop terrorizing people and terrorizing me. Sure, bring on the magic. Get into the tower. Um, but I'm going to leave it there for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you later. Bye.